genetic modified uh, food like that, right? And also yeah. some of the IL centers, they are already, in fact, there's, there's some established, uh, is, I mean, sorry, fact that uh, they are already sterilizing women in Africa, okay? Through some of the stuff yeah, they are doing to them in order to reduce the reproduction the of in Africa. That is true. Yeah. But yeah. Africa, Africa and Africans have always been like uh, the guinea pig in the lab of all these people anyway. We've always been vulnerable because we have weak men directing our fear. But all those things are true. Raising the alarm now, maybe it will probably give it more awareness. Charm, but it's true. Yes, it, it, it will give it more awareness. But I think what I want people to understand is the depth of the problems that we need, that we are facing. Not just the decoupling of the, the entity called Nigeria, but also the um we have to fight back as black people because these people don't have any regard for us in terms of our intellectuality or no. anything no. their hope and aspiration for us is to remain subservient so that they can steal the resources a lot of people who think that the resources are not a factor here i don't know what planet you're living in practically the it whole is. world is mm -hmm. is living off of the resources of africa because they know that once you have an educated africa an intellectual africa that they have to deal with right they know that they cannot be getting any of our things for free no. and most likely never even get anything from us to start off with because again it's not just us using our resources to be our resources for our own use right so that before it gets to them at the end of the day they are probably buying you know the end product right we're not giving them raw materials so yeah. even if they're going to get raw materials from us they'll get they'll 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 have have to use pay. it in africa exactly they'll use have to use it in, the in, africa, or produce they'll have it in to africa and take it to your countries and take it to your country, see, all right? Yeah. Or, or you have to pay, ex, you know, extortionary rates for those materials, right? So, you know, so a lot of the times... So we need men here, with spine. We need women with hearts. Men with spine, women with hearts. So take over leadership at every absolutely. small corner that you can. That's why I'm, I'm encouraging a lot of people to join us in Glasgow. See, charm, right? Yeah, I, some people have know, to do what we are say... talking about here all the time. You know that, like yeah. we are not going to keep giving all these ideas and expecting those who are benefiting from a, dis I mean, a destructive place they are building there, right, to take our ideas. Yeah. It is time to encourage people, and in fact, to put resources behind people to go in there and make that happen. And do, and however, make it's going to be, yeah. you know. Just one last thing, because I think other people want to call sure, in. Sure. You know, so the the lady who was. Uh, maltreated by her boyfriend, husband, or whatever, you know. Yeah. I empathize with her, but I also don't empathize with her because the certain things she said in there are just ridiculous. You yeah. know, she said things like God bless God blessed him with money. And I'm like, are you okay? <laughs> you stole from somebody. I say God bless him. How, how is it that God is blessing you with stolen with stolen goods? This is the problem we have in yeah, Nigeria is that know. you know that there's no understanding of, of what it is that is even coming out of their mouth. It doesn't make any kind of sense, but yet yeah, you're putting it out there. Now, we've always said here on this platform that a lot of the problems we have are the fact that the general population of Nigerians are waiting for their own turn. And they blast right? now. Yes. They are, and they are the like change, the reflection of their leaders, no doubt. They are yeah. the reflection of their leaders. So the change that we want to see is us waking up, each and every one of us waking up in the morning and saying, you know what, let me be the change that I, that I want our leaders to be, to, to, um, our, that I want our leaders to be. If you can't be that change that you want your leaders to be, then we still have a problem. That means my ego is not communicating. I know. Okay, so if, if you are sitting down somewhere and you're saying, oh, you know, God is blessing you with stolen property, you have a mental problem, yes. okay? So generally what I want to say finally is that it, let us start to be the change that we want our leaders to be. That's one. Because not only do we have to fight our leaders, we have to fight the global you know, forces as well which are against the continent. That's so beautiful, okay. Charm. I love that. Thank you so much, right, for that. Thank you, my you are all well to everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's our lady there, Charm. Uh, as brilliant and as beautifully submitted as ever. Okay? You need to begin to see what you think you would do that if it becomes public, yeah. it is going to bring you shame it is going to bring you so much, including sorrow, like cry. Why do it? Why do it? Elder, hello. 
Hello, can you hear me? Okay, maybe I lost him. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, so sorry. Now that I take another one is when the uh, elder spoke. I had him on uh, the waiting and he's been there forever. Okay, I have another caller. Hello there. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good, you? Baba. I, who is this? Uh, this is Ken from California. It Ken is from Ken Cali. from California. Ken from Cali. Yes, sir. How are you today, yes. sir? Good, you? Well, very well. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, how is your family? We thank God, sir. We can complain. Yes, thank you so much. All right? Please. Yeah, my brother. Um, so. You know, in the past, I've given analysis in terms of uh, Nanga hunger. And long ago, we begin to keep it to after a while. People know the water for him for that. Uh -huh. You know, the thing is, with all the things that are going on and listening to you, recently we have come to a conclusion that Nigerians cannot be safe. Nigeria as a country cannot be safe. And it doesn't look like people will get us anytime soon and revolt and do the right thing. It's not looking I so. completely lost faith in that entity. Hmm. You get my point? I do. So, um, I had, at some point, I had a little bit of, you know, faith that, hey, people, when hungry, you don't retire them in certain things. Then go get up, begin to fight their oppressor. But if what I'm saying it doesn't look like it's going to happen. I so, know. I don't know. It's just, and it's very distressing just sitting down and holding my hand and watching this thing. Know. You know it's, what I mean? It's just like uh, people, people are complaining so much, but at the same time, they appear so you helpless. And you are wondering yeah. why, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't know. But, uh, you know, recently I will tell you something that happened. Mm. I got traumatized by that situation. Mm. Um, my, my wife, uh, family member, they grew up together. One of the, it's like a family, they grew up in the same household. The guy lives in Ibadan. Uh, I put on All of a sudden, the guy called us from nowhere. He needed help. He was crying that his daughter got admitted in the hospital and they even have money to so put her in the hospital. So we tried to take the case also. We tried to do whatever we can to help. Mm. And eventually, this little girl died. And mm. when my wife told me what happened, because I was asking them what was it, what did they diagnose her with, what was the problem? They said she had meningitis. Meningitis. is terrible. Yeah, meningitis is terrible. Nobody should be dying of meningitis. It is. Because okay. uh -huh. the thing is, if you find out any, you can cure it just by using an antibiotic. You get my point? I do. And oh. This little girl died from this particular illness because she's a uh, 16 months old. Oh, and no. I was telling tears about the situation. And you know the statement the dad made? What? My daughter died because of my poverty. Ah, that just, is just, uh, going I, to be, yeah, it's like a life trauma for somebody like that. Just come out and be like, you yeah. know, I lost I lost my daughter because I'm poor. No, no nothing poverty. else. Yes, nothing else. Kill that side. It's just poverty. Because he said he found out the problem. But there was no money to even take care of the problem. So he was just trying any way he can to try to see if there's a way to fix it. But do you, you know, do you know that a lot of people, right? A lot of people who are like, uh, who consider themselves as elites, kind of like those who earn better than those who think should be earning minimum wage and the rest of that, right? Sometimes when they hear the story about people dying or children, I mean, dying because of 5,000 naira, because of 10,000 naira medication, right? Some of them feels like it is exaggerated. Is that possible? And I do really wish that people go to those hospitals, those general hospitals, those orthopedic hospitals. Go and look at the victims of or of the accident. Go and look at uh, the victims of uh, child mother the mortality. Where, you know, go out there and see what people are passing through because of peanuts that could save their lives, but they still lost it. So, so my brother, I was traumatized because I have it older home and I was looking at the picture and say, imagine having a child and you can't even do anything about taking care of this baby because you are poor and you have no access to funds. And the hospital will never accept that baby. If it's in the West, they will do whatever. They will take care of that child first and they will send you a bill that the same thing they will move the bill. Uh -huh. You get my point? You feel the worker yeah. about and say, I'm in debt. Why are you in debt? Or oh, it was because I called the ambulance 
and then they took my daughter to the care and i didn't have a i didn't have a health insurance yeah. so now i'm in debt of uh, four thousand dollars say oh we thought uh, american take care say well they will still take care but you pay the debt but they will take care of you of first course. not in that place of course of course Hmm? I mean, even some cases too, they even wave the, even if you owe the hospital, they wave the money at some point. At some point, so exactly. Now, if you they push up, say, oh, more, I don't get money, say, I don't get money, say. At some point, they feel right up the off self or give you, like, but they will still take care of, of that yeah. you. Uh -huh. Not in that place. So, my brother, my brother, it's, it's, uh, the situation is bad. And I was telling my friend recently that he's in Nigeria. I'm like, and your age now is calculating the next 10, 15 years, 20 years. You be at your retirement age. Even you want to not retire now for Nigeria in the city. Mm. Then if you retire because you don't even have a job, there's no safety net. There's no, there's no safety, safety net. net. Exactly. There's no 401k. Yeah. What do you call it in the US? There's nothing to fall back on. People are actually just barely existing though, in that place. So. No. Yeah. So how, how are these people going to survive? The next, the next 20 years, the people that will get old, there's no work because in the past 20, 30 years, they've not been productive, no job to hire yeah. them. Damn it. No, nothing at all. Then how is the country dealing with this issue? And this stupidity to the National Assembly, they talk about the uh, National Anthem. For all I care, then we then go carry portable song, uh, brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, remember, they just said, Zazu. No, remember, Zazu. Hey, Zazu. That was there can be a National Anthem. And a lot of people would actually yeah. agree to sing that too, instead of this one. And then they, and then they, they, they argue about how green it is. I don't understand it. Instead of the important things they're supposed to be talking about. So, my brother, I will leave you at that. Man. God bless you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Of us, you I know? know. God bless you so much. Yeah. Eh? We'll keep uh, pushing yeah. out yeah. there yeah. and we we'll continue to yeah. let yeah. those who probably have any chance uh, of uh, making a difference in their way do it now. If all of us carry of our own, uh, yeah, before we come. Thank you so much, Ken. Yeah. Mm? Uh, that's uh, pretty much. Uh, it right sometimes you have to sit down and ask yourself and be like uh, are these guys human beings or not so when austin called them they are just a bunch of uh, toddlers okay toddlers who have no idea of what they are doing right but here is uh hello hello yes sir that's nice. an elder akiola i know you uh, <laughs> How are you this uh, afternoon or evening, sir? Thank you, General. Yes, thank sir. you for what you do. Thank you. We can't thank you enough for thank how you're liberating the people's mind. If revolution is going to happen, it's going to start from uh, from inside every one of us. God bless you. Uh, hmm. Revolution, you don't just revolution on the street. It will start from inside of us. And that is a good job you're doing, uh, General. Thank you, sir. And uh, please. We'll continue to do this. Um, few things I need to get out there today Please. is, uh, you know, we have been having this debate around uh, minimum wage and all that. Mm. I think the debate we are having, I don't think is the right uh, debate in essence. Mm. It should be, uh, you know, the debate should be about the um, how much the senator get paid relative to the minimum wage. Now or the governor, or even the president too, you know, you look at the places like New York, for example, the minimum wage there is about $16 per hour. And if you, a normal person, usually you work about 40 hours. There's no way that the governor of New York who get paid about $250,000 per year is going to make time stay of minimum wage in New York. No way. You go to, you go to Maine, May is the uh, cheaper government in America. They earn about seventy thousand dollar per annum, mm. and the minimum wage in uh, Maine, the state of Maine, is about fourteen dollar fifty cents. There is no how uh, the governor of Maine is going to make more than three times minimum minimum wage if you if well, you capture the minimum wage. Hmm. Yeah, as for making uh, working forty hours per week. So what is the point here? The point here is that when we can bring this senator and salary in relative to the minimum wage, then it's going to be easier for them to be able to pass appropriate law that bring common people to the level of what they are earning. 
you know, has for 100,000 today. Mm. Okay. Mm. Once they devaluate your NERA, they increase their own salary, you're still going, your situation is never going to change. It's never going to change. So, but, but if they are making law such so that a minimum wage also dictates how much they to take home, then everybody will focus on how to get everybody better. That is the first uh, point that I believe people should start making this debate this way. For. Mm. Not just asking, pay me 200,000. He, he did devaluate that uh, 200,000, saw that 5,000 naira is equal to dollar. That 200,000 will not buy loaf of bread for you. I can tell you that. It Go and ask what happened in, uh, in Zimbabwe. Yes, I know when what you everybody, think is impossible. It's already happening. Already. Everybody were carrying millions of Zimbabwe money. Yes. And uh, they were suffering. So if you believe bigger money is what is going to solve it, you know, think, think twice. Hmm. We have to bring the senator and the governor and the president to the multiple of the minimum wage. And uh, nothing, maybe the president 10 times minimum wage. Uh, maybe senator 8 times minimum wage. Then uh, you start to see that uh, everybody will be fully aligned. That is the first point. Yes, the, the second point, mm -hmm. when you see all this labor, you see them, people saying hello, this and that, they, they keep Keep fighting, keep fighting. Yeah, like Trust keep me. on, no, don't stop, eh? Don't give up, don't fold. Don't stop. <laughs> let let uh, uh, Tunubu call out one of them, their labor leader, and say that why can't you come and become a minister, a uh, minister of labor? The same man that is fighting, fighting uh, governor, uh, government today will be the one telling you, is this labor? They are always too much sex. Yes. They are always too the much sex. to us. What government is doing and how labor is uh, enemy of the people too. So hmm. Oshiomoli was yeah. I've attended his rally when he was labor leader in Akure before. And the way it hmm. was it was wearing the, his conductor, that's brown conductor with Kaki. his eye like a uh, shouting with all with the top of his voice, with his all the muscle on his edge. And all of and that with think? these big eyes, that, ah, I wish you more, you know, go better for you. I was one of those people that actually felt like Nigeria. Eh? <laughs> Nigeria should be led by Oshiomole. That not this person is supposed to be president. And this kind of person, this one loves us too much, but they will never allow this person to be president. I didn't know I was a fool believing the lie. You would think this man loves Nigeria. No, he loves his pocket. And if you see any of them today and you think they are doing you good, Anything. forget about it. Hmm. As them, we are not looking for how much risk. Let us tie everybody together. If hmm. everybody is going to be poor, let the senator, let the House of Rep member, let the governor, let everybody, every one of us be poor together. If That's you fair. if you are going to be rich and are going to make us poor, you know, That's ask fair. for the right, the right question, not just uh, increasing money and all that. And part of the problem, like we have rightly said, is that we don't love ourselves. You know, um, I, I had my first degree in a quarter cut, and, and the Asu Shia man who was fighting government at the time was uh, made commissioner of education. And it was the same person that was saying, this Asu, they are on too much. Oh, well, now, now only we go give all the money for this state. Hmm. You can imagine kind of that, that kind of thing. So we don't love ourselves. When you see people pontificating and telling you how much they like you, just don't fall for it. Don't. Ask for fast. Just tell and them to the, prove the it. Part, and now it is yeah. when you tell them to prove it that the story will start. Yeah. I will, I will, I will rub some, uh, some feather today a little bit. I will not go too much deep because <laughs> I go on the path of, uh, go of my obedience. Mm. We, you know, we, we now see a situation where Obi and uh, Atiku are coming together. They are all laughing and mm. want to form coalition and all that kind of stuff. To and save I, Nigeria, I see how to rescue Nigeria. To rescue Nigeria. Forget about those people. Uh, mm. They invite somebody. They think there was this uh, interview that Omo Yele should be about. He cannot be part of uh, them. And he, yeah. based on his principle, and all that, and I saw some obedient coming to criticize. Nobody call you, sir. Nobody call you, sir. You know, my brother, you have to understand. Uh, uh, Atiku and Obi and all these people cannot come together. What they are trading is your future. 
are right. trading your future. That's right. They, that's what they are trading. Give me this, I give you that, give me that, and I give you this. It is your future that they are trading. Until we are ready to make a stand and say enough is enough. We, this is one of the reasons they didn't like our law. I'm happy that we actually reference our law today. Mm. Our law will not promise what it will not deliver. You know, the, the when he was in London and they asked him question if he's going to maintain coin interest in Nigeria, it's a boldly uh, reply. Do you want another uh, our lower presidency in a British colony? Mm. Let a politician be disciplined to stand on principle. A man like Atiku will never represent the interests of the youth. Never. Let, is it that we stand for the truth or we deceive ourselves? All these, all trading needs to stop. Your future is what is being traded in this uh, arrangement. Reject them. Anybody that you believe is corrupt, uh, only if uh, he will support this person, he will support my person, and my you person know, will get there. You know, reject like, it's only my way or no way. And reject them. Reject them. Uh, come, let the youth come together. More than 50% of the electorate, in fact, 70% of electorate in Nigeria. Are youth. Yeah, young if we can together, we can show this guy the way out. Don't compromise your stand. Don't com compromise your principles. Don't let them use you to, to bring uh, the criminals who are currently hibernating out of power. Bring them back to power. They will do what they, they will do worse than what they did to you before. And Obi Obi won't stop them. And uh, that, that is the truth. So yeah, all the truth. Say, but, so it's just that the way, the way uh, Shore was going about it, there. he was making it more ridiculous. Sure, you get. It was like uh, get, even those who were like there. his own guys, right? They were like, "Listen, you are taking this thing more or less like holding these guys responsible for whatever is going on in Nigeria right now, and that is so unnecessary." Okay, now if you can take a dig, take a dig at yourselves, right? That's all right. But the way you are actually going about it, right? It's like. Then, Esa, she would have said uh, obedient are uh, dangerous people, right? Who beat opposition up. I never expected that from him. I swear. But again, it is what it is, right? Elder, thank you so much.